Moving right along with today's episode, I mentioned before the break, we're going to talk about the Packers and what they do with a lot more picks than they, I'm sure, expected in the first three rounds and how they're going to maneuver around that. But one last time on the show, I will remind you guys, if you have any questions or comments you want to make on any of the segments, to use the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net, that you see on your screen or running across the ticker down below. Using that link makes it able for me to see your question pop up on air in my chat box. I can read your question on air and carry on the conversation that way, answer any questions or anything you guys want to say. I think it's better this way. It's more engaging, more conversational, and it's a big help on top of everything with this show and the rest of the shows on the network. So again, if you could use that tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net, It would be greatly appreciated from all of us here at the network. But back to the Packers, back to what they do with five picks in the NFL draft, or at least in the first three rounds. Um, We mentioned, or I mentioned before, leading up to this, writing all this information down, the Packers surprised everyone last year with how well they performed with an extremely young team last year in the playoffs. I think they were actually the youngest team officially um, in all of the playoffs. Um, They're still that right now. Most of their significant pieces are 25 or not that much older, 26. They are still the youngest team, like I mentioned. They only have one player over 30, and that's Preston Smith, who is 31 years old. And they can get even younger, which is the crazy part, because they have 11 picks in total, and three of their own um, picks in the first three rounds um, are their own, number 25 in the first round, then 58 and 88 on day two, plus they have the second round pick from the New York Jets in that trade with Aaron Rodgers at 41, and they have the Bills third round pick as well at 91. All inside the top 100, obviously, all in the first three rounds. And that's a lot of draft capital to work with. If you're coming off a major year last year with the Packers, you want to build on that. Obviously, you had you were pleasantly surprised with Jordan Love and how um, exceptional he played, how well all the young receivers stepped up. Of course, the offensive line played great. Aaron Jones balled out once he came back from injury and into the playoffs. Unfortunately... That inexperience, that young team that we saw couldn't get it done in some of the crucial moments against the 49ers. But again, that just comes with experience. It was their first time all being there together. They surprised everyone with that win in Dallas. That was, I'm sure, electrifying for them, exciting for a young team. But with a more seasoned team like the 49ers, it comes a bit differently. You're going to have to play all 60 minutes and... They didn't play them all to their best. They had a chance, I'm sure. Um, It was definitely close, but that just comes with experience. I expect them to be successful this coming year. I think they're a dark horse in that NFC, if you would still call them that. I think they've really pronounced to everyone that they've arrived, but in many people's eyes, they're a dark horse team, and I'm picking with them. I'm sticking with them as a sneaky pick in this year to surprise even more people in the NFC, but to do that, it all starts with the draft. Like I mentioned, they have an abundance of these picks, so what do they do with it? No Packers general manager now that they have Brian Gutekunst. No Packers general manager in the past has made five selections in the top 100 in 18 years. So this is really new territory for their general manager. A lot of people, some sources have said that Could this be an avenue now to trade up into the top 10? That has never been done, or he, specifically Gutekunst, hasn't really done that before. And he answered that. They asked him about it. Now this week again, with spring practices going on, you have more media there in the building. And they asked him about the possibility of moving up in the top 10 with all of these picks, to which he said, "I I think it's very expensive to do that. From what you have to give up, To go from um, where we're at right now, you're giving up a lot. So unless it's a quarterback or a rare, rare player, I think you have to be careful um, with that scenario. And on top of, you know, being risky, 
realistically, I just don't think they need it because it's not like this roster needs a lot of offensive players, a lot of defensive players. They have already established a lot of their starters. Maybe you could go safety, but they've already addressed that with, with Xavier McKinney. Could you get him a partner back there? Yeah, that would be great. You could look to offensive line, maybe, uh, now that David Bakhtiari moved on. Yeah, he wasn't playing um, as the season went on, and he didn't really play as much as he used to because of those injuries and because it just wasn't, um, he wasn't just a player, It he was in the past. So you lose him free agency, but Rasheed Walker filled in for him, and it he honestly didn't do bad. I was fairly impressed with their offensive line in the playoffs. That didn't look like a glaring need. So where do you really look to to try and improve to have to move into the top 10? I don't see it. I see it like Brian Gutekunst that it isn't a necessity right now. And you have to be careful about it like he put it. But I would almost 90% rule it out because of all the reasons that I mentioned. And on what now he can do with 11 picks if you're not going to trade up that drastically. Um, it is a bit daunting to see all these options now with these picks. Gutekunst has never had 18 or made 8 um, picks in this part of the draft. He has only had 8 first round picks with Green Bay and 7 of them have been defensive players. So... Uh, could that be a tell on where where we could go, where we could look at with all these selections? The only exception to that one time that he didn't pick a defensive player was Jordan Love. And talk about hitting it on the head. The one time you don't go defense, you find your franchise quarterback. So lucky for them, lucky for the Packers, they hit on that. And defense, again, you could, could go that way. You could find a linebacker, a... Safety, like I mentioned, but I don't think that's a massive need. Corner could be something you look into with trying to find somebody to um, line up alongside Jair Alexander. They sit at 25 right now in the first round, and that's pretty well suited to find a corner, a probably not linebacker if they're going to go defense, which history says that they're probably going to do that. Because I don't see a lot of first-round talent in the first draft at that position. From all the mock drafts, from all the analysts, it usually seems like the linebackers in this year's class are being pushed at least at the earliest to the second round. So I've ruled that out already. To me, the obvious choice, the one that makes the most sense, is trying to find a safety or a defensive back in the first round. And oddly enough, again... Brian Gutekunst has drafted three secondary players all in the first round in the past that he's had the job with the Green Bay Packers. Jair Alexander in 2018 as the 18th overall pick. He drafted Eric Stokes in 2021 at pick 29. And most recently, he drafted Darnell Savage in 2019 um, at pick 21. So secondary is a very popular pick for him. They still need some secondary help, and that's why you see players like Cooper DeGene or Tyler Newbin start to make more and more sense because not many teams in that area as well don't need a safety in the first round, don't really need a corner unless it's a number one. And there have been questions around Cooper DeGene because he's coming off of an injury. He had a separate pro day, so teams might be skeptical on him, causing him to fall. And the top of the list at corner right now sits as uh, Quinion Mitchell and Terry and Arnold most likely. So if teams aren't getting that, it seems like the feeling around the NFL is that Cooper DeGean could be in there. Of course, you have guys like Cool, um, like Cool Aid McKinstry as well. But Quinion Mitchell and Terry and Arnold have done such a good job that I think they've elevated themselves to that higher part of the draft. And then everybody else can kind of just file in whenever teams need it. So it's not a drastic need where everybody else desperately needs one, where the Packers can just sit there and have a choice of going with one of them. Those are starting to make more sense. Offensive linemen, I mentioned before, could be an option, but Gutekunst has never really drafted 
offense in the first round, and he has never actually, in fact, drafted an offensive lineman in the first round. In his eight drafts that he's had, not one of those picks has been for the offensive line, and it has worked out for him. He came into a good situation where he had good offensive linemen and hasn't really needed to draft one that high, and all the other picks that he has gone offensive line have worked out for him. You look at Elton Jenkins, drafted him in 2019 in the second round. He's now a starter for them. Josh Myers is a starter for them. They're starting safety. He was picked in the uh, second round as well in 2021. So good for him, good scouting, good player valuation to find these gems in the later rounds to not use a first-round pick on offensive line. And again, at 25 with the offensive linemen, I believe they're going to start to go at 11 or 12, probably the earliest, the way it all seems to be breaking down with the Raiders, the Broncos all there, the Saints right after them as well. All of them couldn't go wrong with drafting an offensive lineman, so I think the major run is going to start right there, where the Packers, to say that they're going to gamble on one, I don't want to really put that label on it because it could work out for them, but the best offensive lineman to me, just based on all the scouting and all the grades and stuff like that that have come out, are starting to go in the 12 to 17 range, I would say. So the Packers, I think, could wait on that, which is why, again, it just locks down the feeling that I'm getting with them at 25 to go um, to go secondary bring more experience to that part of the field because there is a lot of communication there. Bring in another voice in there to try and lock it down, I think would make the most sense. But on top of the draft and what they could do with this pick, I would love to see them get a bit more experience, specifically at the wide receiver position because all the wide receivers, they don't have one that's older than 24 years old. Jaden Reed is 23, Romeo Dobbs and Watson are 24, and then Dontavion Wicks is 22 years old. Using some of those picks or signing one uh, veteran wide receiver could be an avenue for them to explore potentially, maybe using those picks in a trade for somebody that isn't a star wide receiver. You could use some of those picks to draft a second, a third wide receiver for this team. I think that would go a long way in helping them be a more reliable option for Jordan Love. And the offensive line class, to just wrap this all up, is very deep. It's one of the deepest positions, not only this year's draft, but that has come out in recent years. So I think waiting on that, finding one late in the rounds, it has worked out for you already. I don't see why this year would be any different. Now that this draft class, this group, is one of the deepest it has been in recent years, I think probably for me, Tyler Newman would probably be the best pick because he is a great talent. He is ranked as the number one safety on a lot of people's boards. It makes sense for them to fill in that hole and have a great partnership there with um, Xavier McKinney and Tyler Newman. Could also entertain a move back with Washington or the Buffalo Bills if they see one of them is desperately, desperately trying to move up. But I've talked about both of those teams before, uh, more so the Bills. I've talked about them trying to move up. I don't think it makes sense for them. I don't expect them to at this point. So picking at 25, keeping those five picks, I think will fill out this roster more for the Packers and good for them that they don't have to move, do too much on that. In my estimation, they could draft, fill out the roster, and – continue to develop this young team it's an exciting time to be a Packers fan and like I mentioned before I have high hopes for them I love what I saw out of Jordan Love I think they're going to be a sneaky good team this year in 2024 in saying that it allows me to move on we're going to go to a quick break just here in a few seconds and on the other side we're going to go further into Dion I mentioned yesterday those six teams that he pointed out for Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders. Well, now he kind of gives a reason why some players, generational type of players, might pull an Eli Manning and tell teams that, hey, I don't want to be drafted here. I want to go here. He gives a reasoning for that. Find out what that is after the break in just a few seconds. We'll be right back. <laughs> 